Hello again. So now you've assessed long volumes and finally you have to assess long fields. So let's say that you see an opacification, i.e. lungs are more opaque than normal. The first question to ask yourself is whether it's focal or diffused. In the next three lectures, we'll discuss diffused lung opacification. Then we'll move on to focal ones. So let's get started. Diffused lung opacifications on a chest X-ray can be divided into three patterns. A reticular pattern, which appears as a network of lines, or an alveolar pattern, which appears as fluffy, cloud-like, or hazy opacities, or a nodular pattern, which appears as an assortment of dots. Now, many diseases produce abnormalities that may display more than one pattern. So, there isn't often a pure pattern, and we look usually for the most dependent pattern on a chest X-ray. And recognition of these patterns frequently helps us in narrowing the disease possibilities so that you can form a reasonable differential diagnosis. And although our course is about chest X-ray, but in diffuse opacities, CT scan becomes very important and will often need a CT after the X-ray to identify the pattern more clearly and therefore narrow the differential diagnosis. Now don't worry about how you'll differentiate them all as we'll talk about each one separately and now we'll start with reticular pattern diseases. So you look at a chest X-ray and you find that lung fields are full of interlacing linear shadows that appear as a mesh or nape, so it's a reticular pattern, like in this case. Then, what's next? Next, when you see a predominantly reticular interstitial lung pattern, you can think of the following most common causes. It can be due to pulmonary interstitial edema, or interstitial pneumonia, or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Maybe some collagen vascular disorders like rheumatoid arthritis or scleroderma, or maybe due to some drugs like chemotherapeutic agents. Or in a cancer patient, it can be due to metastasis of that cancer, or due to a granulomatous disease like pulmonary sarcoidosis. But how to differentiate them all? Well, I can tell you just one word, clinically. So let's take some cases and discuss them. Now let's say that a 45-year-old woman came to you complaining of a fever and non-productive cough that started 7 days ago. She has also shortness of breath for the last 2 days, along with headaches, generalized fatigue, and muscle and joint pain. Her CXR shows diffused bilateral interstitial infiltrates. And finally, her leukocyte count is 12,000. These findings are typical for interstitial pneumonia, also called atypical pneumonia, which shows diffuse reticular opacities on a CXR. Now another case. A 52-year-old woman comes to you because of a six-month history of shortness of breath and non-productive cough. On auscultation, you find fine inspiratory crackles bilaterally, and her 6R shows diffuse bilateral interstitial infiltrates. You order a CT for the patient, and you'll see two very important findings, which are honeycombing and traction bronchiectasis. These two findings result from fibrosis, which causes irreversible dilation of bronchi and bronchioles, i.e. traction bronchiectasis, and enlargement of air spaces, i.e. honeycombing appearance. So pulmonary fibrosis is the most likely diagnosis in this patient. And this is another example of pulmonary fibrosis CT. Here we can see clearly traction bronchiectasis and honeycombing appearance. Now another thing that causes diffuse reticular pattern on a CXR is interstitial pulmonary edema because of left ventricular failure, where the left ventricle is unable to bump sufficiently so fluid starts to accumulate abnormally in the extravascular compartment of the lung. And by the way, if fluid continue to accumulate in the lung, interstitial edema will become alveolar edema and we'll see fluffy cloud-like opacities as we'll see later. Now back to interstitial pulmonary edema. What we'll see usually on a chest X-ray of a patient with left ventricular failure and interstitial edema. Let's take the CXR for example. You can see hyalur interstitial opacities which give the hyalur shadow a butterfly or bat wings appearance. The cardiac silhouette appears bilaterally enlarged indicating cardiomegaly. And there are thin linear opacities radiating from the hilum to the apex. Here they are in red. And we call these lines curly A lines. And we can also see lines from the hilum to the periphery of the lungs, here they are in green, which we call curly P lines. And if we look at the costophrenic angles, although they are shown in their entirety, they appear to be covered by an area of increased opacity, 
suggesting pleural effusion. Now to another case in which we can see diffuse reticular opacities, which is sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a multisystem disorder characterized by non-caseating granulomatosis inflammation, and the first symptoms usually include exertional dyspnea and a dry cough. Now a chest x-ray is the most appropriate initial test in a patient with suspected sarcoidosis, so what can we see on a chest x-ray? Well, pulmonary sarcoidosis is classified based on chest radiograph into four stages. Stage 1, we can see hilar or mediastinal nodal enlargement only, as in this case. In stage 2, you'll see nodal enlargement and parenchymal disease, as in this case. In stage 3, you'll see parenchymal disease only, and in stage 4 or end stage lung, you'll see pulmonary fibrosis. Now, here's a question. We know so far that sarcoidosis causes in the first stage hilar lymphadenopathy and therefore hilar opacities on the PA view of CXR. But with left-sided congestive heart failure, there will be congestion in the hilar vessels and therefore hilar opacities too. So how can we differentiate them? Well, here we can use the lateral view, as in sarcoidosis, we can see cauliflower-like mass that corresponds to enlarged hilar lymph nodes, while in congestive heart failure we can't. Now let's say that a patient with previously diagnosed malignancy like this patient with a breast cancer comes to you complaining of breathlessness and dry cough for the last two weeks, and her CXR comes with interstitial opacities. In this case, a rare but important to consider diagnosis is lymphangitis carcinomatosis which refers to spreading of the tumor through the lymphatics of the lungs. Now another cause of interstitial opacities can be drugs especially chemotherapeutic agents like amiodarone, bleomycin, busulfan, methotrexate, and nitrofurantoin. Like in this case in which the patient is taking bleomycin and we can see clearly extensive bilateral interstitial opacities because of it. Like in this case in which the patient is taking bleomycin and we can see clearly extensive bilateral interstitial opacities because of it. And here's another case of a 59-year-old woman who came to the emergency department because of worsening cough and shortness of breath for the past two weeks. Cough is non-productive and symptoms worsen on exertion. Bipezillar inspiratory crackles are heard on auscultation of the lungs. And she denies any history of lung disease or tobacco use. She's taking nitrofurantoin for a lower urinary tract infection and the chest x-ray shows reduced lung volumes and bilateral increase in interstitial markings. In this case, keep in your mind drug-induced lung disease as a possible cause. And what if a patient with non-collagen vascular disease like systemic lupus or rheumatoid arthritis came to you complaining of progressive shortness of breath and cough? On examination, there are bipezillar crackles and finger clopping. You did a CXR and there are reticular opacities, then you did a CT scan and here's the result. It demonstrates extensive pulmonary fibrosis and you can see here the extensive honeycombing. So it's mostly a collagen vascular disease. Now let's sum up the lecture. You look at a chest x-ray and there is diffused opacification, i.e. lungs are more opaque than normal. Then you ask yourself what type of opacification is this? If you can see a network of lines, i.e. reticular pattern, and it's the predominant pattern in the image, you'll think of the following causes depending on the clinical scenario you have. If the patient has fever, cough, and shortness of breath, then it's probably an interstitial pneumonia. And if there are perihilar interstitial opacities, enlarged cardiac silhouette, curly A and curly P lines, then you'll think of interstitial pulmonary edema due to left ventricular failure. And if you can see honeycombing and traction bronchiectasis either on a CXR or CT, then there's a pulmonary fibrosis which can be idiopathic or collagen disease related or because of a drug the patient is taking or maybe due to a radiation. And if there are mediastinal lymphadenopathy with interstitial opacities, then you'll think of sarcoidosis. And finally, if the patient has a primary malignancy and now there are interstitial disease, then keep in your mind lymphangitis carcinomatosis. In the next lecture, we'll talk about what causes airspace disease, or in other words, what can fill the airspaces beside air and why. See you in the next lecture and wish you all the best.